Six months that I have been paying for my choice through reduced access to my most amazing children ever. Six months where I have stayed silent on this topic because of the guilt and fear of being judged for what I did. I'm not staying silent anymore. When I married, I meant what I said in my vows and never intended for it to be my starter marriage like some do. It's been six months since leaving my husband for another man. It's been six months since leaving my husband. Six months since I left him for another man. Six months that I have been experiencing the utmost happiness while also experiencing the most gut-wrenching guilt. Six months that I have been paying for my choice through reduced access to, to my most amazing children ever. Six months where I have stayed silent on this topic because of the guilt and fear of being judged for what I did. I'm not staying silent anymore. When I married, I meant what I said in my vows and never intended for it to be my starter marriage like some do. It was a forever thing, or so I thought. Unfortunately, some small differences grew to be bigger ones over the years. And for a while, I was sitting alone at night working out a budget for if we did split. Could we afford the house and cars and daycare and child expenses and everything else? I loved my husband and my neighborhood. And I knew if I was the one to leave, I would have to give that all up. We have children and I have no idea how this would affect them. I had no idea how to co-parent or how to share time or any of those things. But as those lonely nights became more with him downstairs and me upstairs, I didn't know how much longer I could do it for. Instead of facing my unhappiness and voicing my concerns, I put on a happy face, sent loving text messages every day and slept around in secret. It didn't make me feel good, the guilt was killing me, but knowing that I could feel attractive and want it again made me keep going back for more, until eventually everything changed overnight. Someone who I had been attracted to for a while showed interest, and after the first kiss, I knew that I couldn't stay married any longer. One night, as my husband and I were sitting down to watch a movie, I blurted out that I had been cheating. I left that night and moved out soon after. I never wanted to cause as much hurt as I did that night. He hadn't done anything to deserve that, but I didn't know how else to handle the situation. It was selfish, and for that, I lived with the, with the guilt of it. My children suffered through three moves in six months, switching schools, varying schedules, and parents with ever-changing temperaments. I can't watch a movie with the mom and kids in it and not cry anymore, no matter if it's a happy or sad movie. The nights my kids aren't with me, I miss them every single minute. Being a part-time parent was never my wish. My kids can drive me crazy, but I still want to be there for all of the insane and hair-pulling moments. I want to be there to kiss them when they are hurt and to tell them to go to sleep a million times each evening. But I wake up now every morning happy despite my home record label. The kids are adjusting and opening up to me about their feelings and I see a light at the end of the tunnel. If I could do it all over again, I would try to do it differently. But I would still do it because despite all the problems in my guilt, I am happier and that makes me a better mom and a better partner. My marriage was not that bad, and my husband is a great man and great father. Unfortunately, I don't handle conflict well, and over the years found myself drifting apart from him as we had very different ideas and ideals of what we enjoyed. I should have talked more about it. We probably should have gone to counseling. 
I never wanted to hurt him and for a long time I figured that I better become a better person and change because my morals were lacking. But I knew the discussion would be one of, one of judgment. There were already hurt feelings from previous things done in the relationship that were always lingering in the background. You were never spoken about. The truth was that I never felt good, good enough for him, not being myself anyway, and that it isn't to say that being a lying, cheating wife, I should have felt good or he should have accepted me for that. Before any of that, I had felt the same. I guess the lying and cheating was my way to justify my feelings. Obviously, I have work to do on myself. I am not perfect. I do not think cheating on your partner is a good idea, and I recognize the hurt that it causes, and I do not wish that on anyone. I don't regret my decision to leave, just the way that I did it, and I will live with that because I made the mistake, and I own that. It was my fault, but it still hurts sometimes, though, and it will take time to get over that for both of us, I think. Cheating isn't a good thing. I am lucky that I have some amazing friends who support me, but I think I'm a terrible person. I may have made a terrible choice, but that doesn't make me a terrible person. At least that is what I keep trying to tell myself. I do feel horrible about what I did. Any because people are judged so harshly when they cheat. Many have to live with guilt and negative feelings and lost friends and have no outlet for that because they are one who caused the pain. So they don't get to claim that they have any. I am learning many lessons every day since I left and I will live with the guilt too. I'm okay with that or becoming okay with that anyway. But those in a similar situation can see that it's okay to feel bad and say so. Sure, I screwed up and I am not asking for a free pass on, on that. Just the ability to explain my side of the story and realize that it is not guilt free, pain free ride on this side either and i do not want anyone's sympathy or think i deserve it i know i was 10 percent in the wrong 10 percent, and that is and that is the choice i made and the consequences i live with but that doesn't mean those in the situation should have to stay silent 10 percent wrong i know sure i could have left him and not told him i was cheating but at that point, everything needed to be laid on the table and the truth needed to come out. Not because I wanted to hurt him more, but because if I didn't, someone would have told him and that would have been worse. Should have tried harder. Maybe should have done more. Likely, but I didn't. Relationships are unique to each couple, group, people, and this is how mine played out. Some people go into marriages thinking that it will not be their last. Those who joke about it, but honestly believe that, that it is their first marriage and not their last. That's fine if that works for them, but it wasn't what I thought when I got married. I do, see, I do share custody of my children, but I am not the primary caregiver as I didn't want to uproot them from their home when I left. It's hard having as pawns when he is mad mad at something I do, and then decide to reduce my access and claim that it is better for the kids that way. We are working on it, but I have a long road to go. I just, I just try to be the best mom I can when I do have them, and let them know how much they are loved by everyone. Piece of crap. What a piece of crap she is. I have this guilt. So this is what she feels bad about. She just hates that people view her as a homewrecker or uh, someone who, 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 who ruined the marriage. Is that what she, yeah, homewrecker label, despite my homewrecker label. That's what she cares about, how other people view her. You know, she doesn't love her husband. You guys hear her say a starter marriage? Is that, is that what they're going for now? This is just my starter marriage. I'll divorce him when I find someone better. Wow. They're just marrying people, settling for that plan B and still hoping for plan A to come along. As soon as he does, I'm out. That was just my starter marriage. What? I've heard of people saying back in the day, starter houses, you know, get your, get you a starter house or 
you know, don't jump, jump to something big. Yeah. Get something small, get a starter house, you know, start a car or whatever, a starter marriage guys, a starter marriage. Are you serious? Ridiculous. She's a piece of crap. Let's check out the comments. It is time to forgive yourself for all of the fragile hearts you fumbled in the dark of your confusion. That's part of a quote I read recently that struck such a chord with me. So many times, people try to tell us that it's okay or we didn't really hurt anyone. It's important to acknowledge the ones we hurt, as you have done. But it's also important to acknowledge that you cannot change that hurt. You can only forgive yourself and try to show more love and kindness and forgiveness. I'm sorry you felt driven to a path that caused such pain to so many people. I'm sorry that your guilt and fear over what people would say kept you quiet for so long. I hope you find peace and happiness and that you are able to share that with your children, your new partner, and your co-parent. Someone said, she did not fumble his heart. It's more like she spiked it in the end zone and then kicked the field goal with it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. Just out of curiosity, I'd love to hear more of your story as far as why you and your husband were so unhappy. Did you do anything to try to work on your marriage? Did he know how unhappy you were? Did you ever talk about it or go to counseling, etc., etc.? The thing that struck me was the inclusion of the fact that you were still sending him loving text messages every day while sleeping around. Why? Were you just playing a role or trying to bridge the gap or covering your tracks? As a reader, it would help me understand where you were coming from if there was a little more to this story. I'm happy to hear you found happiness despite the turmoil and obvious difficulties. I resonate a lot with this. I was not 100% committed to my marriage and thought I'd never give up until I was so miserable I felt I was, I felt I was sinking. Fortunately, we had no kids to complicate things. Thanks for sharing your processing, healing, and internal battles. Mm, mm, mm. Guys, it's not worth it. It is not worth it. Trust me. Marriage is about committing to working together to create a healthy relationship despite being unhappy. Yeah. Some, some don't. Mm -mm. You are certainly free to make any choices you want, right or wrong. 10% wrong? Really? I think you forgot a zero on the end of that 10%. Absolutely. Thank you. What is she, what is she talking about? I was 10% wrong. So are you saying your husband was 90% wrong? Really? You write him love letters while you're getting banged out by some other guy into pieces? Smiling in his face saying, I love you. Can't wait to see you when I get home. Probably still getting it in with him. He think he's, he think he's taking care of his family as a loving wife. And you only caused 10, you were only 10% of the issue. Wow. That's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. Guys, let's check out another story. Mm, mm, mm. Reddit relationship advice. Me, 19 year old male, girlfriend, 19 year old female, wants to have an open relationship. Me, 19 year old male, and my girlfriend, 19 year old female, have been in a relationship for the last two years, of which most of it has been long distance, but still we have had some good sexual moments. But as time went by and her this interest in expressing sexual needs through the long distance, I started becoming asexual. I expressed this to her multiple times and she said she'll change and she hasn't. So when I told her yesterday I'm becoming asexual, she told me if I become asexual, she would either stop the relationship altogether or we'd have to make the relationship open for her. In this case, it makes sense. You, know, you just break up. 
Me in a helpless situation wanting to be in a relationship with her agreed to make the relationship open yesterday itself, as it as it was pretty apparent to both of us that I'm for sure becoming asexual. We love each other very much, but the fact that she's actively searching for a person to satisfy her sexual needs really hurts me. Break up with her, sir. When I express how it's hurting me, she in a proper manner expressed what else she could do. But I knew that if she was asexual, I wouldn't want to pursue a sexual relationship with anyone else. Because you're asexual. Okay, sir, really? It really hurts my heart. I want to be with her, but I'm really getting hurt by her pursuing other men for her needs. She's right now looking for a person, and she said she will find someone by the end of the week. I feel like ending myself. Really? Come on. I want to be with her, but I also want her to do to not indulge in those sexual things with other men. What should I do? I have no one else to talk to about this. Sir, what are you talking about? You don't like doing it. Why don't you just break up with her? And if you really just need to be around her and you like being around her, just be her friend. But is that going to hurt you too, knowing that she's she's getting it in with other people? Why does it matter to you? Like you don't you don't you don't get it in. You don't like that. Is that's not who you are? I we knew I knew somebody in college who was like that. They, at least he said he was. He told everybody he was. I mean, we never saw him with girls or he never dealt with girls or did anything or dealt with anybody. So we assumed it, but I don't know. He just didn't talk about it. So I assume those people, if if they're in some type of relationship with somebody, but that person does want to get in, I assume they wouldn't care. Like if you, if you really break down what asexual is. They just wouldn't even care. Like, I don't, I don't indulge in that anyway. I don't care. But if it hurts you that she's getting it in with other men, maybe you you should just break up with her. I'm sorry. It's a little silly. Guys, let me know what you think about both stories in the comments. I'll catch you guys at the next one.